Okay, then let me remind you of the definition of the separable topological space. We have studied at the end of the last class period. And we say that a topological space X tau is separable if it has a countable dense subset, which means there exists, there is a countable subset A of the whole topological space X whose closure is the whole topological space itself. You know, right? yeah. yeah, that's the formal definition of a separable topological space. Yeah, what does that mean? We have a whole topological space X and we have some countable subset A and the closure of that countable subset A curves the whole topological space. That's a very strong condition, right? The separability is a very strong condition in that sense. So to look at the whole topological space X, you just look at its countable subset A, which must be enough, which must be good enough. Because the closure of only this countable subset curves the whole thing, whole topological space. So that's a very strong condition. Strong topological space. The separable topological space is a very strong topological space. And we have, we had two nice examples of separable metric spaces. The metric space is a special case of topological space. So, yeah, well, first of all, the whole real number line with Absolute metric is a nice example of a separable topological space, separable metric space. Then what is its countable dense subset? Its countable dense subset, for example, maybe the set of all rational numbers, Q. If you take the closure of the set of all rational numbers, then that covers the whole real number line R. Okay? So, yeah, the whole real number line R with the absolute metric is a nice example of separable metric space. What else? How about any n-dimensional Euclidean space with its user metric? You know, right? You know the user metric defined on any n-dimensional Euclidean space. That's another example of separable metric space. Then what is its countable dense subset? Q to the power n. Yeah, that is the collection of n tuple rational numbers. for all i from 1 to n. So that's the collection of n-tuple rational numbers, rational component numbers, which is countable. That's a countable. And we have justified that its closure covers the whole n-dimensional Euclidean space last time. So, yeah. This n-dimensional Euclidean space has a countable dense subset. Right? So that's another example, nice example of a separable metric space. They are very you know, straightforward examples. They are very much trivial examples of separable metric spaces. What is a non-trivial example of a separable metric space you may have in your mind? Well, f 
for any p which is more than or equal to 1 and less than 5, less than infinity. How about little l sub p n n? How about little l p n n? Which have, which was defined by what? Which was defined by, which was defined by, A collection of all real sequences, all real sequences, such that, such that, of course, each component of the sequence is a real number for all i from one to infinity. And infinite sum of the pth power of the component is some finite number, which it doesn't have to be in general. Right? Yeah, that was the definition of little LPN, right? That's the collection of all real component sequences such that infinite sum of the piece power of the component is some finite number, which it doesn't have to be. Here for example, how about constant one sequence? What is the infinite sum of the piece power of the terms of the sequence? So then that means what? You add the constant one infinitely many times, then what must be happen? Then must be infinity, right? So this sequence is not an element in this set. You know. yeah, so there are many, 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 you know, sequences satisfying that condition. Okay. On this set, The metric was defined by what? If you have two, di two different sequences A and B on this set, where, you know, let's take two different sequences in this set. First the sequence A is this, and the second sequence B is that and both of those two sequences are in little lpn and then both sequences satisfy that condition summation condition okay summation of infinite sum of the pth power of the terms of both sequences are some finite number and then how do we define? How did we define? The metric between those two sequences in LPN. That was defined by little LP norm of their difference. Which was defined by infinite sum of Sorry, one over piece power of yeah, one over piece power of infinite sum of piece power of difference between terms of the sequence a n minus b n. Yeah, this was how we have defined the metric between the two sequences a and b in L P N. One over piece power of infinite sum of the piece power of the difference between the terms of the sequence, sequences. Then that will be another example of separable metric space. Do you imagine that?
this little LPN with this metric is a separable metric space. That's a non-trivial example, I believe. In other words, this metric space has a countable dense subset. Then do you imagine how a countable dense subset of that metric space looks like? Do you have any idea about that? The result is little lpn. With this metric D we have defined is a separable metric space. Which means this metric space has a countable dense subset. Then what is a countable dense subset that covers the whole metric space LP? For any natural number k, yeah, let's let a sub k be the collection of collection of For any natural number k, let's let a sub k be the collection of this sequence such that the first k components, the first k terms of the sequence are arbitrary rational numbers and all other components are afterwards are zeros. Yeah, that's the definition of a sub k for any natural number k, then each a sub k is countable. Of course it is. That's a countable set. Right? Then how about all of their unions? The union of countable union of what? Countable sets is still countable, right? So we have countably many countable subsets. Yeah, each a sub k is countable and we have countably many a sub k's, right? So if we take all their unions, that is still countable. As you might have studied in uh, set theory, set theory. Then capital A, which is the union of all a sub k's, where k is from in 1 to infinity, is also countable. Then we want to claim this capital set A we have defined is a countable dense subset of the whole metric space LP. So our claim is what? The closure of the set A we have defined here is covering the whole little LP. That's what we want to claim. claim. Then we conclude what? We conclude this metric space is a separable metric space because this metric space has this countable dense subset, right? And dense subset. To prove, the, to justify that claim, let's take an arbitrary element in LP and let's let epsilon be an arbitrary positive number. So let's let, okay, let's let X
be an arbitrary element in LP. And let's let epsilon be an arbitrary positive number. And then we want to claim, we want to prove, we want to justify that one. There is some element in this count of set A which is in the epsilon neighborhood around, around, that, around that point. Right? Yeah, we want to, mean, we want to prove, what I mean is we want to prove that every element in here is in A closure. That's what we want to justify. So we want to play, we want to prove what? Every epsilon neighborhood of any element in LP here contains some element in A there. That's what we want to claim. So for that purpose, we did choose. We did take an arbitrary element in LP and arbitrary positive number epsilon. Then what happens to this sequence X we have chosen? Then because the infinite sum of, okay, infinite sum of the piece power of the component is some finite number by the definition of by the definition of LP, right? There must exist some natural number capital N such that such that, such that, such that, the infinite sum of the piece power of the terms x of n where from n plus 1 to infinity is less than half of piece power of epsilon. What I mean is, you know, if we have a finite infinite sum in general, then its tail, that's the tail of that infinite sum, starting from n plus 1 to infinity, right? That's the tail of that infinite sum, must be small enough. You know. This infinite sum is some finite number, then what? Its tail must be small enough. Right? You know, there exists some natural number n such that what? After nth term of that series, some must be less than that number. Then let's pick rational numbers. R1, R2, up to R capital N. Such that difference between X of J's and R sub J's is less than some specific number we have used, which is Epsilon divided by 1 over piece power of twice of capital N for every J from 1 to capital N. Yeah, the reason why you know, this justification is challenging, a little challenging, is because what? We must construct a, we must construct an element in A, which is in that epsilon neighborhood around this number, this, this sequence, right? Yeah, that's an existence proof. That's why this, you know, justification is a little bit challenging. So that's this process. Yeah, what is an element in A here, A here, which is in the epsilon neighborhood around this sequence we have chosen? Here it is. Let's let 
the sequence R be those components and zero elsewhere. Let's let the sequence R be what? The first capital N components are the, the, the component, you know, the rational numbers we have picked up in the previous line and then what? Put zeros afterwards. Then this sequence R is definitely in where? In A sub capital N. A sub capital N. What is the definition of A sub capital N? A sub capital N is the collection of all those real sequences such that first, the first capital N terms are arbitrary rational numbers and what? Zeros afterwards, right? So this sequence we have set up here is an element in A sub capital N, which is of course a subset of our capital A. So this sequence is an element in capital A and we want to claim this sequence is in the epsilon neighborhood around the point. Okay? The sequence we have picked up originally at the beginning. We want to claim that this sequence here, R, is in the epsilon neighborhood around what? This sequence we have chosen originally at the beginning. For that purpose, let's look at their distance. Let's look at their distance. Then what happens to the piece power, piece power of their difference? Let's look at what happens to the piece power of their difference their distance, piece power of their distance. That's actually same as the piece power of distance, their distance. That's what that means. After we do that estimation, we will take the piece roots to the both sides afterwards. So let's look at what happens to the piece power of their distance. We want that to be less than piece power of epsilon. Then we conclude that what? If we take the piece root to the both sides and then we conclude what? The distance between the two sequences is less than epsilon, which was what we have desired. Then how do you get that estimation? Yeah, let's look at you know, the facts we have set up back there. How do we write this out? The piece power of their distance is same as Now you can easily figure it out. That's the piece power of the distance of X and R. You know, on R sequence here, right about, the terms, you know, after N terms, all components are zero, so then that's why, okay? Only first N components are alive at the sequence R, and after that, all components are disappeared, right? So that's why that's happened. Then yeah. let's apply the previous inequalities we you know, did the setup. Let's apply this first inequality to the first summation there, and then let's apply the second inequality to the second sum here, and then let's combine them together. Then I believe we will have what we have desired. You can easily check it out, right? Yeah. That's less than 
sum of okay, difference between the terms is less than epsilon divided by one of p's power of twice of n to the power p that's happened for all j from 1 to capital N from 1 to capital N this difference is less than that number plus what happens to the second sum here that's exactly that inequality right the second sum the piece power of the terms of x of k from n plus 1 to infinity is less than less than half of pth power of epsilon and then let's finish out the final simple computation then pth power of epsilon divided by pth power of p1 1 over pth power of 2n is 2n plus half of pth power of epsilon and then where this is a constant in terms of the k index so if you add this constant capital N times the same as capital N times that constant itself plus another half of piece power of epsilon and then n's are cancelled out and then what we have addition of two half of piece power of epsilon so their addition is what just piece power of epsilon end of it. So the pth power of their distance is less than pth power of epsilon. So to take the pth root to the both sides. Then we conclude what? Distance of those two sequences less than arbitrary number epsilon. That was what we have. That's what we conclude. So no matter what element in LP we choose and no matter what epsilon neighborhood around that sequence we have chosen, there is some element in A. Okay, there is some element in A which is sitting inside that epsilon neighborhood around that element X we have chosen originally. That was what we have claimed. So there is no other choice. The closure of that countable set A must curve the whole LP space. That's what we must conclude. So this LP space, this metric space has this countable dense subset. Right? So this metric space is a nice separable metric space we must conclude any questions on this we had to construct a sequence which is in d epsilon neighbors around this arbitrary element in lp So depending on how the element X looks like, we must have different construction of the sequence R in A, in the countable subset A. Any questions or any comments on this? What is another, what is an example of non-separable metric space then in your mind? Do you have any example of non-separable metric space in your mind?
คาวบอทเอลอินฟินิตี้แอนวัตอิสต์เทคนิคของเอลอินฟินิตี้แอนเดสอ่อนอีกเอ็กซ์เคชั่นของซีเควนซ์เรียลซีเควนซ์ที่ถูกปาวน์ดิ้นดังนั้นคุณรู้ว่าจริงๆเอ็กซ์ปาวน์ดิ้นเรียลซีเควนซ์เคชั่นของปาวน์ดิ้นเรียลซีเควนซ์เดี๋ยวสิคอลเลกชันของเรียลซีเควนซ์ซีสัจจ์นั้นทั้งสูงสุดของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของเทอมของ And then, how do we define their distance? Their distance, their distance is defined by the L infinity norm of their difference, which is same as what supremum of the difference between the terms of the sequence. Yeah, that's the definition of the distance between the two sequences in L infinity n. Then what do we want to claim? That L infinity set with the D metric we have defined, just defined, is not. A separable metric space, mm -hmm. unfortunately. That's what you want to claim. Do you have any idea for to claim that this is a this is a non-separable metric space then? Let's let capital S be the collection of all real sequences such that the components of the sequence are only positive one or positive two. So that's the subset S is a collection of sequences, real sequences, such that all components of the sequence are only one or two. For all i from one to infinity. Then what is the cardinality of this subset? Is it countable or uncountable? <laughs> What is your idea about its cardinality? Is it countable or uncountable? Hmm? It looks countable, right? But unfortunately, it's not. You know. That's an uncountable set. If it's countable, what contradiction do you have? Suppose S is countable. Then we can list all elements in S like this, right? If we suppose this set S has only countably many elements, yeah, each y sub i is a sequence in the subset S.
then what contradiction do we derive? Let's let I, I will construct a sequence Y, which looks like, you know, Well, then let me see how I could write it down. Let's let the sequence Y be uh, to define the first component of the sequence Y. Look at the first component of Y sub 1 there. If the first component of Y sub 1 is 1, then let's let to be the first component of y. If the first component of y sub 1 is 2, then let's let 1 be the first component of y. You understand what I mean, right? So each component of this sequence y totally depends on what? The each component of what? This countably many sequences in S. So then go reverse of each sequence there. Then what is the second term of the sequence y? Look at the second term of the sequence y sub 2. If the second term of the sequence y sub 2 is 1, so let's let 2 be the second term of the sequence y. And if the second term of the sequence y sub 2 is 1, so 2, then what? Let's let 1 be the second term of the sequence y. Keep going on this way. You understand what I mean? If we keep going on this way, And how do you write it out nicely? Let's let the sequence y be z sub 1, z sub 2, z sub 3, z sub 4, etc. Where each g sub i value is positive 1 or positive 2. Each g sub i is positive 1 if I term of what? I term. I term of the sequence. Okay, I don't know how I write it down nicely. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, well, I sub I, I, I sub I, J, something like, you know. Yeah, something like. Yeah. Yeah, you understand what I mean, right? If we construct the sequence Y in that fashion, and then what? What is happening to Y? I don't believe this sequence we have just con constructed is in S. I don't think so, right? Yeah. So that proves the uncountability of that subset S, right? If it's countable, then we can enumerate the all terms of that element in S. But we can avoid, we can avoid all terms still, right? So let's let y be like this and then what? That's different from everything here. But that must be in S as well, right? So <laughs> we must know. We conclude this set is uncountable. Let me see if we have enough time. Okay, yeah. That's an uncountable set. You know. If you take different sequences x and y in S. What I mean is if both x and y are sequences in S, which are different, which are different, which are different, then what is their distance? You can imagine that. If you take two different sequences in the subset S, then what is the distance, which is 
the supremum norm, supremum norm, right? The supremum norm of x sub n's and y sub n's. Each component of the two sequences are what? Either one or two, but they are different sequences. Then what? What must be happened to their distance? Each term is one or two, but they are different sequences. So then what? The supremum of their distance must be what? There is, there, there, there is no other choice. That must be positive one, definitely. So if you choose two different sequences in this subset S, and then what? Their distance must be precisely positive one. So if, again, if we choose two different sequences X and Y in S, then, one half neighborhood of the first sequence x and another one half neighborhood of another sequence y must be disjoint definitely you understand what i mean right we have two sequences x and y and that their distance is exactly positive one so if you take one half neighborhood around x and another one half neighborhood around y. They, the one half neighborhoods, their one half neighborhoods must be disjoint. Definitely. So what then? I hope I could finish the proof of this. Then what must be happen? Let's collect all one half neighborhoods of elements in S. So let's collect all one half neighborhood around any point X. in S. Yeah, let's collect all one half neighborhoods of the elements in S. Then what? This is an uncountable disjoint. collection of open balls. Okay, that's uncountable collection. That's un uncountable collection of disjoint open balls. Because S is an uncountable set, right? S is already uncountable. So S has uncountably many elements. So each element in S has its corresponding open ball there. So what? We have uncountably many open, open balls here in this collection. And then each ball is disjoint. Each ball is disjoint, right? So this is an uncountable collection of disjoint open balls. If a subset A on that metric space is dense, if you have a dense subset of L infinity, then by the definition of the denseness, by the definition of the denseness, the subset A 
must have at least at least one point at least one point in each open ball in this collection if a subset A is dense then by the definition of the denseness each open ball here must contain at least one point in there right? Then what does that mean? If the subset A is dense, then by the denseness, definition of denseness, each open ball in this collection, the, the subset A must have at least one point in each open ball in this collection. Then what does that mean? That means what? But we have what? Uncountably many collections of disjoint open balls and the subset A has what? At least one point at each disjoint open ball there. Then what does that mean? Then we must conclude what? The subset A must be what? Uncountable as well. Right? You understand what I mean? Here is a subset A. But this subset A must contain at least one point on each open ball. Right? But we have uh, uncountably many disjoint open balls, right? Then what does that mean? There is no other choice for the subset A. The subset A must be an uncountable subset as well. So what did we claim here? Any dense subset of L infinity N is uncountable. That was what we have claimed. If you choose any dense subset of L infinity, then must be what? Uncountable. So then let's take its contraposit. Which is what? If a subset is countable, then that's not dense. That was what we have claimed. Let's take its contraposit. If you take any countable subset, then that's not dense. That's its contraposit. Then that means what? <laughs> this L infinity set does not have any countable dense subset. So we must conclude this L infinity set with that metric D is not separable. It does not have any countable dense subset. Yeah, that was what we have claimed. Okay, yeah, that's enough for today. So that's uh, you know a non-trivial example of non-separable metric space.